then you're not getting red flags out of nowhere. I think that sometimes people think that photographers are able to photograph something from like 50 feet away and stay there in the entire time. I will tell you a horror story. You need to understand that, obviously, so that you can get all of the angles and get that figured out. A, you need him to know what you look like. Hello, and welcome to the Cameron Tia Show. Today, I am breaking down how to photograph a proposal. Now, you've just been asked to photograph a proposal or you wanna get into that market. It's something that is so fun. Like, imagine all of the joy surrounding it. But it's also a once in a lifetime opportunity. Literally, you have to get it right then. So I am breaking down eight of our favorite tips for setting yourself up for success and setting up whoever reached out to you for success so that you can photograph a proposal with ease and have so much fun and hopefully be able to convert that into a wedding booking. So tip number one is you need to get on FaceTime or on Zoom with the person that's reaching out to you. In this case, let's just say that his name is Dan. We need to communicate directly with Dan, and there's only so much that can be done over email or over text. Likely, Dan is typically not the planner point person. Um, in the future, if he does get engaged and they go to plan a wedding, it may be his fiance that's doing a lot of the planning. So in this case, he may be more keen to just texting with you or just emailing with you, but explain that it's really key to get face to face. A, you need him to know what you look like. And he may have just gotten this referral from somebody and not have that under like that knowledge. And it's really key. But also, most importantly, it's going to be so much easier to be able to chat through things with him over video where you can see his reaction to things and you can start to understand what his vision is and what he wants to happen here. Okay, number two. On that FaceTime call, I want you to learn about his vision, learn about the location, and find out what level of privacy he's comfortable with. So first, his vision, um, it may be extravagant. He may have a lot of things planned with roses or popping champagne or anything like that, or it may ju be, just be him getting down on one knee proposing there. You need to understand that, obviously, so that you can get all of the angles and get that figured out. Second, he's going to likely be more familiar with the location than you are. So get all of those details and get really specific about it. I will tell you a horror story. Um, we've had two proposals that have gone ill, I would say. The first was way worse. It was the first proposal that we had ever had happen, and the plan was that he was going to be out on this dock, was our understanding, of a place that we knew. So we knew this really well. He knew this really well. Um, he explained that he was going to go out on a dock, and there's only one dock at this location, so easy peasy. We were staked out at the end of the dock. Um, he then was going to call us, pretend like he got a phone call, and be like, okay, yeah, we just arrived, and then um, he would do it. So we see him arrive to the location and he's ar arrived about like 100 feet away from us and he calls us then. So we're like, that's weird. He must be calling us and then he's going to walk over. He's going to propose at the dock. He's just telling us to be ready on the dock. Nope. He hangs up. He proposes right there. So it was like this um, edge of the water that is a boardwalk type thing, but it's definitely not a dock or so we thought. Um, and so that's where he proposed. So we had to like sprint down there. Um, I mean, we did miss it, but they were still like we got all the joy from it. They just reenacted the knee part later on. Um, but that was super, super scary because we were not specific about it. So I'm going to tell you another tip about this later. But um, I guess be more specific right then and there because we were at something that we considered a dock. He was at something he considered a dock. And so we weren't in the same spot. So be really specific about the location. Um, if he has photos, that's really helpful that he can text those to you. And then learn what level of privacy he's comfortable with. So we explain to the people reaching out that there's kind of two levels. One is that we are in the location. And this kind of depends on what type of location it is. But we're in the location but we're kind of hidden. So um, we might have like on sunglasses or sweatshirts. This also does depend if the um, person who's getting proposed to knows who we are, has been following us for a while, anything like that. So we're hidden that way. Or level two is that we are like completely hidden. We are like down the alleyway or something. That may mean that we don't actually get like the moment that he goes down on one knee, but we get all of the reactions afterwards. So maybe he wants it to be more private. He wants to be able to just have that conversation with her and have nobody else hear it. And then that's when we would come out. Um, regardless, we always let him know that we are going to come out when it starts happening. So there is a chance that maybe they see us, but in a lot of times people who hire us, that's part of the surprise. They're excited to show their 
now fiance that they hired us or their now fiance knew of us or had been following us for a while. So that's part of it. So that's exciting. Um, but we want to make sure that's clear. I think that sometimes people think that photographers are able to photograph something from like 50 feet away and stay there in the entire time. I mean, we definitely could. We just wouldn't have the same level of photos. And so being really clear about expectations with that is really, really key. On the FaceTime call, make sure to explain and really get it out in the air what your package includes. It's going to be a little different for everyone, um, but sometimes I think that people think, oh, you'll be there for like two hours. Okay, perfect. That's what we're paying for. Like, uh, no, um, you want to just be there for the moment. And obviously the moment will sometimes take a long time. Sometimes it'll be really quick, but explain how many photos it would be afterwards. So like we typically say that it's going to be about a half hour of photos afterwards, um, which is a quick shoot. You know, by the time like after the proposal happens, a half hour flies flies by, um, but it's really important to get that out so that they know what's coming um, and so that they can kind of plan for that if that's something they want. Sometimes that's something that people don't want. They just want the actual proposal photograph and then they want to go enjoy if their family are there, if their friends are there, if they're going out to dinner, anything like that. And that's totally fine, obviously. Um, so you just want to get clear and that's part of getting clear on the vision during the FaceTime. Okay, we tell this person, so Dan, that we're going to share our location with them and they're going to share their location with us. Um, so they, we do that on the day of and then we just share it for the entire day. Um, it's not like we're creepy, like looking up where they're going to lunch or anything, but then it's nice because we know as they're getting close and we don't have to communicate with them during that time um, because that might be a red flag for the person who's getting proposed to. Um, but instead, we can see as they're getting close the whole way. So that's really, really nice if you're iPhone users, obviously, is that you can share your location for the day. Next, we tell them on the FaceTime call if we need to communicate with them via text in the future, which is probably likely. Like we're going to look up the location afterwards. We're going to put together a plan and then we're going to be like, hey, I saw this weird kind of hill here. Is that what you're thinking? That kind of thing. We tell them that we're going to text them with a message at the beginning. So um, what I've been doing lately, um, especially because like the election was last year, is that I would put like Mercury poll, whatever that is, that it, whatever that phrase is, I would put that at the top of the message and then I'd be like, enter, 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 enter. And then I put my message about, hey, I saw this hill. Is that what you're thinking? Because then when it shows up on his lock screen, it's going to show this mer mercury pole thing. And hopefully that wouldn't be a red flag of the person who's getting proposed to seeing a text message that says, hey, I saw this hill thing. Is that what you're thinking? So it just kind of like covers the text message a little bit so that you're just seeing that at the top. So that's a good tip. Okay, this is the best tip. Arrive early and take a photo of where you want him to get down on one knee and send that photo to him. So you may have talked about it one way and he likely doesn't have a vision of exactly where where he's facing, where he wants to face when he gets down on one knee. He probably has a ledge or he has a dock or he has a certain part of the street. But you need to get there, take a photo of where you want him down on one knee because you know, A, where you can hide be where the light is so that you can capture the person getting proposed to best um, and the whole scene best. And so you can take that photo, pretend, get you either put your phone up on a ledge and then have it take a video of you and then you can screenshot that. Or if you have someone with you, have them take an iPhone photo of you um, and pretend like you're down on one knee so you can show him where to face. Tell him in the FaceTime call that this is coming. That will make him feel really secure and not caught off guard because if you get that like an hour before you're supposed to propose and then you're like, oh, I hope I remember. I hope I remember. That's stressful. We want to do the reverse. We want to tell them, hey, we got you. We're going to send you a text message on the day of showing you exactly where to get down on one knee. If you just face that way and have that general vicinity, that is perfect. Then you're not getting red flags out of nowhere where they're facing a totally different way. Okay, then I want you to take some photos of setting the scene. So before they arrive, take some photos of the street. Take some photos of the vista. Um, those kind of things are great for two reasons. Number one, this probably has some sort of significance to the couple. Um, in most cases, it's going to have a lot of significance to the couple. It's going to be a place where they had a first date, where they met, a hike that they really loved, a vacation that they really loved. It's going to have a lot of significance. But even on the like worst case that it doesn't have a ton, a ton of significance, um, it's setting the scene for the second reason why I think it's important. They want to know everything leading up to it. The person who gets proposed to some of the first conversations that they're going to have is, oh my gosh, did my mom know? Wow, how did you plan this? Dang, how did you hire the photographer? There's just this allure of a surprise of how did this surprise come together? And so one of the things is about having setting the scene photos in your gallery that's really awesome is that it shows like what the scene looks like before they arrived, which seems very simple, but it's very exciting for them because it's like, oh my gosh, look at this street. And we arrived two minutes later and then 
I got engaged. Like, how cool is that? So those are just really fun photos to include in the gallery. Um, obviously, you're going to be testing lighting like crazy. Um, I feel like anytime that a proposal comes, you know, we're watching them on our sharing our location. And so we're watching them get closer and closer. And we're like, oh, the light's changing. Oh my gosh, it's changing. Because you just want to have your settings right. So um, you'll probably have those photos anyways, but intentionally take them. Okay, last point is make sure you know the must-have shots. So time is gonna go really fast. People will react differently and sometimes they'll just be in shock and you'll have to kind of like ease them into photos and that's totally fine, obviously. Um, but you wanna make sure that you know kind of some must-have shots that are postable. In most cases, people are looking for photos ASAP. So if you can get a big chunk of previews out to them, as soon as possible, like I'm talking that night because they probably want to announce, um, they are looking for the most postable images. So there's kind of two things. I think you need some uh, classic photos. You need, actually there's three things. You need some classic photos because they want just smiley photos. You need some freaking excited photos, like joyful, like, oh my God, jumping, that kind of vibe. And then you need some ring details. So think about those kind of three buckets. And so for classic photos, we always do like a chest to chest. We'll do something else classic, like a prom pose, some normal things where they're smiling some normal variations like a nuzzle a forehead kiss because they might want something like that that's classic to share especially parents might want something like that that's just smiling at the camera classic photo for grandma on the fridge second bucket is super joyful um this includes lifts this includes hands out this includes hands in the air this includes jumping this includes like bear attack hugs um something that are crazy joyful because that's the emotion popping champagne if they have it um a lot of lifts make a lot of sense for this um because they want to post something epic they probably have a caption that is about being super excited and stuff so that makes sense in that way and then the third bucket is things with rings so same thing ring popped out ring on the chest ring holding hands ring on the back of the neck um, you just want a couple of those because the ring might be super significant to them or they could care less. But regardless, it's an announcement. And so the announcement sometimes makes sense to have a ring at the beginning of it, to show off a ring, to be really excited about the ring. Um, we don't typically do ring detail shots at this time. I think that's something that makes more sense for an engagement session um, where they'll want to pair that with like their engagement session outfits for maybe a guest book or something. We instead do the ring on them because they're going to want to share something that's kind of dual purpose that, you know, is wrapped around his neck and you can kind of see the detail of the ring or the rings in focus where they're super excited in the back so think about those three buckets and focus your posing because it's gonna be quick it's gonna be fast it's gonna be excited and sometimes it may be really fast they're going to dinner with their family um you want to make sure that you hit all three of those buckets so um the last one because i'm sure you're curious is we actually photographed our assistance proposal this last year um i told you that story about that proposal going gone wrong our first proposal the second one is that we were actually in a really remote location um on a hike that they absolutely loved for an assistance proposal and we had tested out because the both of us are you know hiding behind rocks and stuff we had tested out and we couldn't see either of us and she arrives at the spot and she instantly sees cam Cam is like hiding over a rock. She sees his hat, which he wears all the time. You'd probably recognize it too. Um, it's a bomb hat. And um, she recognized that right away. And then there was this like funny goofiness of like her knowing that he's there for some reason, which like there's only a couple of reasons that that could be. And she's on a hike with her now fiance um, at this super special spot to them, a hike they had been on before. So that was our only other situation gone awry. Um, every other proposal has gone great. And obviously in that one, Nothing's really wrong with that. She's just super specific or super suspicious, like the seconds before then the actual proposal happens. But that's fine. It's the same thing again that we're talking about, like the privacy element of like photographers are going to have to come out at some point to get you good photos. So they're going to know at some point um, this just happened a little too early. So um, I'd love to know if you guys have any fun proposal stories, post them down below. Um, I hope that you have some amazing proposals coming up. Let us know if you have any questions. Otherwise, if you like videos like this with photography tips, be sure to subscribe, turn on the notification bell so that you can get notified every time we post a new video. And until next time, bye.